ball in hand, hoping to get an autograph, w. Don approached Michael, w. but MJ didn't call him over to give him an autograph. Instead, he had to ask Don a question. Did you get your money? A year after the Bulls had their change of... Nigga, I will, I'll, I'll get more money if you sign this damn ball. Sign the ball! YouTube, it says he made a million dollar shot and they didn't want to pay him. Shit, you gonna pay me? <laughs> what? Man, you talking about I just COVID that bitch from full court and you talking about, yeah, we can't give you no money. After you just promised me you Boy, I'm I'm coming for it. There ain't no way. YouTube, let's let's go ahead and get to it. Welcome we'll new subscribers, new people. Let's go ahead and get into the video. This guy right here. This is Don Calhoun. He's a big Bulls fan. And he's about to do something that will change his entire life. He did this in front of Michael Jordan? A million? A million dollars. That young man being hugged has just won a million dollars here at Chicago State. Don just hit a shot from 80 feet out. A three quarters court shot. His prize for nailing this absolute bomb, $1 million. He can't believe it. Fans erupt. Don joins the Bulls as they celebrate his victory. Michael Jordan throws his arm around Don and congratulates him. Good shot, kid. Don had just done the impossible. And with the game ball in one hand, a million dollar check in the other. Nigga, what the hell? Why that ball look so... Wait. Why that ball look big as... With the game ball in one hand. What? Ain't no way. This ball bigger than his head. And a million dollar check in the other, Don Calhoun did it. He was set. A million dollars? Except he wasn't. Due to a technicality in the rules of this contest, the insurance company that was required to make the payoff claimed they simply didn't have to pay the man. Don hit a million dollar shot for absolutely nothing. Well, I would have slapped him. No, 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 no. Bro, you better sue? You better sue? You better sue. You better sue like a mother. I would assume. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. My brothers, hey, summer is- Hey, shout out to you, my boy. Hey, 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 hey. But we can't, we can't get into that. We can't get Yeah. You think you could sink a three-pointer? Pretty incredible consolation for one simple shot, but yeah. no one in their right mind would ever offer such a prize for making a single three-pointer. Except they did. I mean, Back in the 90s, money. during that's NBA All-Star Weekend, the league and a sponsoring company such as Foot Locker, American Express, Sony, would host a contest for fans. The NBA's $1 million shots. It was one of the most anticipated side events of the entire weekend, and out of the millions of fans who entered to win a shot, only one would be chosen to take it. Get selected, make a three-pointer, win a million dollars. Okay. An opportunity of a lifetime for four bro, lucky cons- But we gotta get to the bro, we gotta get the NBA back to this. Like, like I feel like the NBA ain't as fun no more. Like, like everybody be thinking they too cool. Like, like we gotta get back to this. Like, we ain't we, do we got anything like this for fans? Like at all, man. This Contestants that were selected over the four years that the NBA hosted the contest. And to aid them in their quest for a million dollar shot, each contestant was joined by a former or active NBA player to give them pointers and advice. In 1996, among the six million entries, 17 year old Demetrius Houston was selected to take the million dollar shot. Okay. With George Gervin by his side and 17,000 fans looking on, Demetrius lines up his shot. Okay. And with a million dollars on the line, he clanks it off the backboard. Gervin tells the kid not to worry about it, but I'm sure he did. In 1997, a man named Jim Valente was selected to take the million dollar shot. Okay. His host and mentor for the event, Wait NBA minute. legend Oscar Robertson. Wait a a man who literally never made a three pointer in his entire NBA career. Yeah. But Jim was focused. It was his wife's birthday. And what better birthday gift than a million dollar check? Oh, so Jim steps up to the line. He's ready. Nigga, are, are you telling me it's only a three point shot? It's only a three-pointer? Y'all niggas trash, boy. I, boy, I swear to God, I would have I would have took my time with it. Y'all know how they be doing, like, on the free throw line? Like, Giannis, he be, he be rolling the ball, look like, rolling. I would have, man, what? What? Boy, don't, boy, they knew, man, they knew not to do this. They knew not to do this in my generation, I promise you. Because, like, if I would have got the ball, bro, it's too, the ways in which he'll spend the million dollars already racing through his mind. I'll get that Corvette I've always wanted. I sure look good in a Rolex. We could really use a new deck out back. Maybe I'll get a boat. Off the rip, his hand placement. 
Or maybe you'll get nothing. After the shot, Craig Sager asked Jim about his experience. A million dollars gone. What went wrong, Jim? Give us some insights. How did you feel at the time? What went wrong? I think I just pushed it a little bit right. Hey, hey, at least you're honest, you feel me? Or else I pushed it a little bit. In 1998, a contestant named Sol Holkman was selected to take the shot. Okay. And for the first time in the contest history, a contestant actually hit the rim. Another year, another million dollar miss. But of all these million dollar shot events, none managed to top the one that started it all in 1995. Okay. The contestant that was chosen, 16 year old Mike Hoban. For weeks leading up to the contest, Mike spent two hours a day, every day, shooting three-pointers. Accompanied by all-star Dan Marley, Mike He's was just locked like in. Me. Going through the most meticulous shooting routine you'll ever see in your life, okay. Mike prepares his shot by, quote, becoming one with the basket. At this That's point, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulled a microscope out and studied the hoop to better his odds. Now we Do you blame him for a million dollars? Man, I would've, I would've, I would've, I would've been like, I mean, what are you talking about? Yes, yes. For a mi bro, bro, just imagine, you got two thousand dollars in your bank account, and all you gotta do is hit this, uh, hit this one shot to get. A I'm telling you, I'm. I'm what are you talking about? Yes. He's taking phantom shots. His routine is becoming more unhinged by the second. He better make it. But though. it works for him. Friends and family look on, watching him live on That's TV, ready to witness history unfold. Mike is ready. Come on. He lines Come up on, the Mike. shots. Come on, Mike. He shoots. And he got me. Mike! And misses the rim by two feet. An air ball. The poor kid is devastated. Friends and family are stunned. All the while, the commentator of the event doing his best to help, but instead just pours on a slew of more disappointment in the process. The young Mike Holman has missed his shot at a million dollars. The good news is, though, he doesn't win money, doesn't become a pro, and his college scholarship hopes stay alive. This nigga's grimy. <laughs> what? That what you say after a man's missed a shot? He can't afford it. He can't afford it for his family now. He's broke still. He's just missed a shot just by a very little. If he just pushed it just a little bit more, he would have fed, fed, fed his family. Now he's going homeless. What the? What? He'll go back what? To the post up player for his junior varsity team. Bro, say he After can't the be shot, a Sager interviews the kid, where he has the bright idea of just asking for one more shot. I wasn't really in that zone I wanted to be in. But, you know, one more shot. You would like one more shot, wouldn't you? Man, I would love another shot. Nah, I mean. <laughs> You'd like one more shot, <laughs> bro, wouldn't you? Bro, I thought he was Mike the main character. Mike never got another shot. Four contestants, a million dollars on the line for one three-pointer and zero winners. And looking back on these contests, it's, it's pretty remarkable that no one hit their million dollar shots. Because countless fans and contestants have hit much more difficult shots for far less money. We've all seen these contests unfold in person. A fan gets randomly chosen out of the stands to come down and try to hit How a half make shot. That? The prize money, nowhere near a million dollars. Usually the prize is $10,000 or maybe $20,000 or a car. This Mavericks fan hit a layup a free throw, a three-pointer, and a half-court shot in sequence without missing. An anomaly of events in this context. His reward for the incredible feat, $3,000 worth of gift cards to a local firm. I would slapped everybody in this arena. They would have to line up for me. Y'all know how y'all like, like, good game? On me, everybody in the arena. $3,000 for some... They just... Oh, my boy. What? What? I just... Half court shot in sequence without missing, and then seeing these contests unfold in person. A fan gets randomly chosen out of the stands to come down and try to hit a half court shot. The prize money, nowhere near a million dollars. Usually the prize is $10,000 or maybe $20,000 or a car. This Mavericks fan hit a layup, a free throw, a three pointer, and a half court shot in sequence without missing. An anomaly of events in this context. His reward for the incredible feat, 
$3,000 worth of gift cards to a local furniture store. But it gets worse, because at a Mavs game a few years later, this woman was put to the task of sinking a half-court shot. She's rocking the dirt gear, she's feeling okay, good, okay. beautiful form, and drills the shot. Nothing but net. What was her prize for pulling this off, you ask? A 65-inch flat-screen TV. The Mavs is cheap! Boy, if you a Mavs fan, boy, I swear, boy, what? The Mavs is cheap! The Mavs is cheap, boy, the Mavs is cheap! A, a, a TV? A TV? I could have I could have just saved up my check from from the next in two weeks. I, I, Absolutely appalling. This guy managed to drill a half court shot at a Blazers game years ago and won round trip tickets to anywhere of his choice. A pretty unlikely shot from the guy, but far from impossible. What is impossible, however, is the fact that another fan hit the same exact shot 30 seconds later. It's clear that some people actually make these shots. Okay. So what would happen if someone actually did hit a million dollar shot? What if instead of shelling out some gift cards or a flat screen TV, a team had to actually hand over a seven figure check to one lucky fan? Wow. It's April 14th, 1993. The Bulls are facing the Heat in Chicago. The Bulls are on a roll coming into the matchup on a three game win streak. By halftime, Chicago is up by 14. Jordan is killing the Heat, 22 points in the first half. It's a great time for home fans as usual, but the real spectacle is about to take place. Throughout the 93 season, the Bulls hosted a promotion for their fans. Among the 18,000 fans in attendance for any given home game, one lucky individual would be chosen to shoot a three quarters court shot to win $1 million. At the time, and to this day even, a million dollar cash prize for such an event is unheard of. But the odds of such a shot going in are so astronomically unlikely that the Bulls and the insurance company that would be responsible for paying out the prize money felt comfortable running the event anyways. Leading he up to that heat that. matchup, 19 lucky fans had attempted the halftime million dollar shot. Of the 19, two hit the backboard, 16 were air balls, and just one even hit the rim. An wow. estimate of a fan chosen at random hitting this shot, less than 1%. And so a member of the Bulls organization went into the crowd and selected a 23-year-old local by the name of Don Calhoun. The reason for selecting him? His shoes wouldn't scuff up the floor. Hopeful, but understanding the slim odds that he faced, Don walked down to the court and prepared to take his shot. A fun halftime gimmick, something to keep the fans involved. They just slapped a million dollars on there to get everyone excited, but no one will ever hit the shot anyways. Chris Hammond, vice president of SCA Promotions, a leader in the promotional contest industry, looks back on the shot saying, the perfect contest is like the most tempting carnival game. Okay. Just feasible enough to make people think they can do it while actually being extremely difficult. You could have Steph Curry out there and still make money. Well, Mr. Hammond, it's time to pay up. Get my money! Get out with it, boy! Come on now, get, get, bro, get my man his money, man. Nah, nah. I would've took the check. Give me that, nigga. In what is possibly the most inconceivable occurrence to ever happen on an NBA court, Don Calhoun drilled an 80-foot shot for a million dollars. The whole place oh. goes nuts. For oh. a moment, it's like Don is part of this Bulls team and they just won another championship. Even the ref of the game comes over to congratulate him. The man just did the impossible, a million dollars. That's more than half the guys on this roster made that year. Damn. And with the job complete, Don heads over to snap a photo with a check in one hand and the game ball in the other. He did it. At least that's what he thought. See, these promotions are combed through meticulously by some of the best lawyers money can buy. The rules and restrictions are tight. Break one of them and you can kiss those winnings goodbye. Don Calhoun broke one of the rules. Where, what? Not intentionally or anything, but among the stipulations of this promotion, one of them states that the contestant could not have played organized basketball within five years of the... I...
with a call a charge, I would be in jail for the rest of my life. I wouldn't even see the latter day. I probably boy, what are you talking about? Nigga, you pick me! You pick me! Bro, no, bro, no, 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 no. That should be a question you should ask before then. What? Bro, what? The contest. And just three years prior to this contest, Don was a member of the Triton community basketball team. The contest people knew this. Don acknowledged this by marking the information on the contest form. But the contest people shrugged it off and gave him the shot anyways. No, bro. The insurance people, however. Hey, 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 shrug off the rule then. No, 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 did not. no, no. To them, it was a clear breach of the mm. rules. Don should have never been selected in the first place. And so the insurance company of the event disqualified Don out of his shots oh, and out of his million dollars. When news broke that the now local legend would not be receiving his money, fans sorry. were livid. As reports on sorry. the event grew, fan outrage grew with it. And within uh. a week, the Bulls organization was under so much local pressure yeah. that they held a press conference announcing that they actually had a change of hearts and they would pay up. Bro, y'all, it took all, uh, bro, bro, but it's, bro, it took all that just for you to be like, okay, we're gonna give this money. Bro, if this was today, Man, we coming. Pause, 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 pause. I mean, never mind, I'm not finna, I'm not finna explain myself to y'all. A very strange and inexplicable decision considering their stance just a few days prior. Don's million dollars split into 20 payments over the next 20 years. His first check for $50,000 was sent out that week. Technically, rules were broken, but Don was getting paid and he had no idea how or why. A year after his miraculous shot, Don heard that Michael Jordan would be in the area for one of his son's basketball games. Okay. A perfect opportunity for Don to get his million dollar game ball signed. So Don pulled up to the game in search of Michael, but with okay. security flocking the NBA star, no fans were getting anywhere near him. But Don wasn't just an ordinary fan. Fact. He's the guy who hit the million dollar shot. Him. Jordan recognized him in the stands and had security bring him over after the game. And with his ball in hand, hoping to get an autograph, w. Don approached Michael. W. But MJ didn't call him over to give him an autograph. Instead, he had to ask Don a question. Did you get your money? A year after the Bulls had their change of- Nigga. I will, I'll, I'll get more money if you sign this damn ball. Sign the ball. <laughs> sign the ball. <laughs> Nigga, sign the ball, please. Like, talking about, did you get your money? Sign the ball and I will sign the ball. Part ...and decided to pay him his money, Don finally got an answer why. Turns out the insurance company wasn't the one who paid Don. They never intended to. After hearing about what the insurance company was trying to pull, Michael Jordan, along with other players on the Bulls, told ownership they needed to pay up. And so the organization did, out of their own pockets. Come Legally, on, the parties involved were within their rights to void the payments altogether. Hey. But Michael felt like what they were doing wasn't right. Come on, bro. And so we made it right. Man, if it wasn't Jordan, for bro. Michael approaching ownership and demanding they pay Don his money, oh, he would have never seen a cent of that million dollars. So turns out that even if it was for a brief moment, Don Calhoun was a part oh. of the Bulls. Seeking oh. nothing in return, Michael and the rest of the players oh. looked out for Don. Oh, and that autograph Don wanted, a couple weeks later, he got that too. Yes, so sorry. what happens if someone actually makes yes, one of bro, those inconceivable you. million dollar shots? On, well, one deserve, way or another, they get paid. Man, shout out to my boy, man. Man, shout out, man, shout out to my boy, Michael Jordan, too. That, that was a goat, goat move. Cause, bro, why y'all trying to play him? Come on now. What? Man, I, I wouldn't even take that level of disrespect. Like, e even if Michael Jordan didn't even go in there, I would have went in there, boy. What are you talking about? Talking about I ain't finna give you your money because of, cause of one rule that you wave, that you wave, that I, mm -mm, you, boy, you better give my money, boy. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all boys and girls next video. We out.